boil the pain, tearing through my stomach as a knife making its way through the body of a kerning animal. I kicked my feet and shouted at the top of my lungs, but not a song escaped my lips. Hi, I am Michelle Sabrina Alexander, author of the book Helpless Cries and Sexual Abuse Advocate. Currently, I'm a student at the St. George's University where I'm pursuing a double degree in the field of sociology and psychology. I reside in the remote village of Pleasant in St. Andrews. I am a past student at, of the Grenville Secondary School, Bishop's College, T.M. Marishow Community College, SBCH Trinidad. My inspiration for the book Helpless Cries came a year ago. After sharing my sexual abuse story and the platform, I am Grenadian. What actually inspired me to share the story was the unfortunate death of Brittany Batiste, who became a victim of sexual abuse, went through the proper channel, tried to seek justice, but unfortunately had to pay with her life. It was rather, rather difficult because um, I remembered when I wanted to share my story and having sent in the story to Cameron Corian, I had to message him and say, no, I don't want to share the story again because I was afraid of the backlash. Normally, victims are re-victimized. I didn't want to be called a liar all over again. I didn't want persons to look at me in this negative way. So it was rather difficult, even during the period of writing, having to revisit the dark places, it was rather traumatizing. But at the end, it was a therapy. The message I would like to leave readers with is that we all have a part to play in ending the incidences of child sexual abuse. I would want to believe that the book is meeting the objective based on the reviews and comments from the readers. Sales is going extremely well, but it's not all about sales or money. It's more about advocacy and awareness and having people to wake up to the reality that we live in a society where sexual abuse is highly prevalent. Okay, so um, as it relates to legislations governing sexual abuse, I believe we all have a greater part to play. First and foremost, in my opinion, I believe that sexual abuse should be a capital offense that such offenses should not be available, especially where we don't have a safe house where we can put victims. Because what happened is we have, we release the victims, well, sorry, we release the abusers or the perpetrators of sexual abuse back to society and they live in close contact with the victims. This can be very traumatizing to the victims. The state most definitely needs to get involved because they are the policy makers. It starts with them. Well, in terms of transferring the victim, you mean a safe house? Yes, we definitely need a safe house. Not just a safe house where we put victims to, to keep them safe from the perpetrators, but a safe house where they would get um, counseling and the proper intervention so that they can turn around and be the best in terms of self. It starts with the policies. It starts with changing the legislations because we could talk and we could advocate and we could do that from now until who knows but without the proper policies we'll just be spinning top in mud no it's really not challenging for me anymore because my passion is just to see changes so when i go before a crowd or i go before an audience i'm all about awareness, I'm all about advocacy, I'm all about helping victims of child sexual abuse, I'm all about educating the public as to how they too can help in breaking the silence and helping victims. Michelle Alexander over the years have learned to accept and love herself so she is coping quite nicely because I don't think um, it's what happened to me in the past. I think it's who I am as a person and I embrace self and I embrace who I am and I think the challenges that I have faced in the past has made me much of who, uh, who and what I am today. Well, as I mentioned earlier in my introduction, I am pursuing a degree in social science. So with that degree, I hope to get the theoretical knowledge that would help me to help victims more. So I'm looking to go into counseling and therapy in the close and near future.
Before the sexual abuse, it was fun growing up in Pleasant. After, well, during the sexual abuse, it was rather difficult because it was a time where I look at others as being more than who I am because it was a time that I wanted to be a normal child and enjoy the things that normal children enjoy. However, I had to deal with that deep, dark secret of sexual abuse. So it was really difficult. I speak to him because I've over the years I've learned that forgiveness is very important, not for him, but for my growth and for my healing. So if I see him, I still say hi. Apparently, he don't show like hatred because um, last year for my birthday, he came to me and said that he was really sorry for what he had done and things like that and that I should forgive him. But I told him that I already forgiven him. Is he need to make peace with his maker? So it's up to him now. I did my part. Correct. I think I would want to go to the rural community because most of the advocacy, most of the help that is there, we tend to focus more on in Central, St. George's, St. George's, St. George's. And we neglect these communities like St. Mark's, St. Patrick's that has a high incidence of poverty. And if we look at correlation and causation, we would see in most instances of sexual abuse, Poverty is one of the major driving factors. So I would most definitely go to the rural areas. Well, it's kind of difficult to tell whether there is an increase in the occurrence of sexual abuse or whether there is an increase in reporting. But whichever way it is, it is very, very alarming for a small society. And we tend to say that, oh, Grenada is crime free, right? Grenada is safe. I mean, Grenada may be crime free in terms of mother, but we have so many social issues. And if they are not addressed immediately, we may be leading to a small Trinidad and Tobago because when people become overwhelmed and stressed, their way of trying to deal with the issue might be violence, God forbid. Policies. I would change, most definitely, um, sexual abuse. I would put it as a capital offense. And is only one thing I can do or multiple? I would also work with colleagues. I would work with non-government organizations. I would work with um, all the other stakeholders to, to come together and develop s greater policies that would help victims. Heightened awareness. Um, one of the things that started last year was going to the different schools. And I was doing that through the Ministry of Social Development and housing. So we were going through the different schools and communities and speaking to people about child sexual abuse, the signs to look for, what you can do to help victims, the numbers you can call to report and stuff like that. Well, the second book to help this guys is Sorry to Success. It's almost finished and should be out by the end of the year because it shows the progression from victim to survivor, fighting the odds, surviving, and stuff like that. So it shows the sorrow to the success. OK, so one of the things that had happened during m the period of me being sexually abused is that I had lost all self-esteem and self-confidence. My performance in school started you know, dwindling. Um, I didn't see a future for myself. I thought that you know, sexual abuse was Michelle. I couldn't go past that, but then um, I soon realized that I had to take charge of my own destiny. So what I'm trying to say is, as victims, you may feel that you're at the end of the tunnel. You're not, right? So you need to start believing more in yourself, and you need to love yourself beyond. Happiness should be your commitment. Never, ever let the perception of others, what society think, what your abusers say to you, because sometimes what we see is that the perpetrators of child sexual abuse, they tend to use some form of not only force, but threat. They would threaten you to the things that they know you are close with. And because you are so close with that thing or that person, you might think, okay, it's better that I keep silence. Do not let that um, deter you from speaking out and do not let that deter you from being who you want to be. You can still achieve. You can still be that lawyer, that doctor, whatever you want to be. I survived and I believe you too. <coughs> can most definitely survive. So before, right, and I'll just track back, maybe to the last three to five years, I had serious, serious issues in terms of depression, in terms of 
codependency. It was a period of my life where I thought that in order to feel good about myself, someone had to feel good about me. So maybe I had to be, you know, quote unquote relationship where I was in love and I think, you know, that was the it, right? And sometimes what happens is we settle for situation of abuse. So you come out from a, um, sexual abuse, but then you find yourself into domestic abuse or, or physical abuse because you settle, you're looking for that love and you're looking for that acceptance. However, today, Michelle is quite confident and she will live a full life. So maybe, yes, Michelle will get married and Michelle will have children and Michelle will have the normal life as a, as a normal human being.